Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we're gonna continue with the phone model we did last week and finally animate it. And if you missed last week's tutorial but you're not interested in the modeling guide, don't worry about it. You can skip it and just download the phone from the description link down below and start animating right away. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, it will really help my channel to grow. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see content like this in the future, please hit that subscribe and additionally the bell button if you want to get notified when I release something new. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. So you should have something like this in your scene, whether you completed the last tutorial or just downloaded the file. And now I want to do this little jumping ringing animation and the first thing we'll do is to give animation some constraints so um, first of all let's set this to 60 frames um, for the animation end and now let's go to the output settings and switch frame rate to 30 frames so now we have two second animation set here i think that's a great starting point for a small um, icon animation or something for a website so let's select the phone and you should have it parented like this when you move it um, everything should move and let's start with the animation now i want this to be cartoonish and stylized a little bit so let's move to frame one and i want to work with the scale first so let's press i and insert scale keyframe you could see it appearing on the timeline there first thing i wanted to do is to charge up for the jump so we'll be doing scaling on a z-axis something like this before the phone actually jumps so let's move to frame 5 and we can enable recording so we have auto keyframes press s and z and just scale the phone down like this you can see the keyframe is added automatically and we have something like this here and now from frame 5 to 10 we can just select this first keyframe press shift d and duplicate to 10 so we have this movement right here this kind of bounce and now on the frame 5 um, when the phone is down so the jump is kind of charged up with that scale um, we can insert a new keyframe and let's insert the location keyframe and we can now move to frame 15 and move the phone up a little bit so press G then Z and move it up something like this um, it shouldn't be too high something like that um, and then on a frame 25 it should land again maybe a little bit sooner uh, I want the fall to be shorter a little bit. The easiest way to do this is just to duplicate the frame 5. Um, but we already know we have scale and position there. So to be actually able to see the frames for different attributes, uh, the best way to do that is maybe switching to animation workspace. There's a dope sheet there. Of course, you could switch to dope sheet here as well, but I just like to do um, the animation view here. And here, um, a part of having a dope sheet for detailed animation view, we can switch this view here um, to the graph editor and you will see just in a minute how this can be really useful. So here we have all the attributes that are animated and now we can just select the location keyframes. You can see them here. So on the frame five, we have these location keyframes. Press shift D and move them to frame, let's say 23. And now the phone charges up, jumps while it expands, reach the peak of its jump and then falls down on frame 23. So that's the animation so far. And now let's work with that stretching a little bit more. So here when the phone is almost down like frame 21 or 22, so it's basically touching already. Um, I want to create a scale keyframe again so let's just press i and insert scale and let's now move to frame let's say 25 and press s then z and bring it down like that so they'll create a new keyframe um, for the scale because we have still the auto keyframing um, but be careful though if you want to make some adjustments in your scene like move objects around and stuff and this will keyframe them so just leave this on only when you're animating and don't forget to turn it off 
So we now have that stretch and compression and we want to release it when, when it lands because right now it just falls flat and it doesn't look much lively. So let's move to frame, let's say 40. Um, we can just copy the scale keyframes here, press Shift D and move them here. So right now it returns slowly to its original state. Um, this doesn't look great so far, but stay with me here. And now to better see what's going on in our animation, actually, we'll use the graph view. But first I want to do some upkeep. Uh, so let's expand the object transform here and you can see all these different channels for the animation we have. Um, but if you remember, we only scaled on a Z axis and we only moved the phone on a Z axis as well. So all these other channels are unused and I'm not planning to use them here. So I will just disable Z location and Z scale. Now hover here, press A to select all keyframes, press X and delete keyframes. And you can see all the channels disappeared. We now have only the Z scale and Z location and it's much better to see what's going on here. And now if you enable those channels, press A and remember in the viewport, if you want to focus your viewport on the object, you press period on an unpad to focus. The same applies here. If I hover over my keyframes and press period, my animation view will expand and I can clearly see what's going on here and now it will give much more sense. You can see on the top there, that's the scale animation, it's going down and while it returns to its original state, the jump begins, it goes up and when it lands, another scale animation happens and it eases out. And it's very easy to modify the animation here as well, you can just grab these and move them. So if you want that scale to be more or less, you can just move this around and the same applies for the height of, of the jump, you can just move it around. And now one more thing I want to do before we actually move in and modify these curves and easing, um, I want to move the handle as well, because right now it just sits there when the phone jumps, so I think it will be nice if it continues a little bit higher. So let's move to something like frame just before the phone starts to fall down maybe something like 12 and let's insert the keyframe there so again i'll be hovering here pressing i and inserting location keyframe and let's move to frame 20 and with the auto keyframe still on i'll just press g then z and move it up something like this and this is much better when it goes up like that and now let's just move to frame like 35 and just select this first frame, press Shift D and duplicate it there. So it kind of falls down. Um, the fall is slow, but it's quite intentional here. And I will show you why right now. But first, let me clear up this animation as well. So I'll expand this. First of all, I will disable the Z location. And I want to keep the X Euler rotation as well. Now let's select everything else, press X and delete keyframes. So now we only have the Z location animation here. And if you press period again, you will see it animated here. And now to change the easing, uh, you can of course move the handles around and that will show you how fast um, this is gonna go back. So even though this is too far on the frame 35, if you modify the curve like this, you will see it will fall uh, faster but I want to give it a little bit more of that bounciness there. So let's select this frame right here. And if you press T, you can change the keyframe interpolation. And there are some pre-made presets here. And one of them is bounce. So let's switch to bounce. And you will see now this goes down much faster because the first bounce happens on the frame 25. And then it does these like secondary bounces. That's why I moved this frame all the way to frame 35. And you can modify this by moving this along. You will see the bounce curve will readjust as you move it around. So that's quite a neat thing. And if you want this to be accelerating more quickly, you can always just adjust the curve there to something like this. Okay. Um, so I quite like this and now if I select both of these objects, press A and press period, I can see all the animation curves for both of those objects there 
and you can easily just go around these points and these handles and tweak your animation however you want. So let's play the loop here and this is looking a little bit better um, but the phone is still a little bit rigid so I want to do the same thing here that I did um, and you can see I moved this frame to frame 4D and it was intentional too because I want to select this frame right here on the frame 25 when the compression happens on the Z scale channel and I want to press T and enable bounce there as well so the compression is bouncy as well you can see it happening here so we have there some bouncing movement and I quite like this and you might notice this is a little bit too slow but depending on what modifiers you have in your scene and what mesh density is there you might get a different frame per second and you can see here I have only like 20 frames per second even though the animation is 30 so you what you can do is to go back to the layout view and in the timeline view you can just expand the playback options here and instead of playing every frame you can choose to frame drop so if your FPS goes low um, your animation will still have the speed it should have and you can see it in real time and now you can see it looks a little bit better so that's the compression the stretching and the jumping here and I want to give this a little bit of a wiggle on the handle um, to support like um, the ringing effect so the handle will wiggle from side to side that's why i left the x rotation here if you didn't have all these channels here uh, before don't worry about it um, you can always create new keyframes so let's do that right now um, let's press x uh, to delete the channel i will just move this to frame one go over the viewport press i and insert rotation and now just delete the y and z by pressing x um, so we now have frame on a frame one for X rotation and instead of animating it manually I will just expand the side panel with N select the channel and go to the modifiers and add noise modifier um, don't get scared with this um, basically what it does it creates a movement like this on the X axis but it's in degrees that's why these lines are so high um, on the chart because you can see there go all the way to 20 degrees and now I just want to limit this and there's this option here to restrict the frame range so let's choose that and we'll start at frame 15 and end at frame 35 so that's kind of a range where the handle is up and you will see here it will start wiggle and now I want to give this some blend so let's say five frames in and five frames out so we don't start that aggressively okay so let's again select the phone select the handle and we can disable the rotation that's automated and again press a to select all and period on a numpad to focus on the animation here um, and this is almost done basically we have some nice jump some stretching um, but the stretching is a little bit rigid still because you can see i've done it only on the z-axis so it kind of just stretches upward here and it would be nice to kind of increase the bulk of the phone while it compresses and here especially so what we can do here is to select the phone go to the object data properties and in the shape keys create a new shape key let's go to the frame one um, create a new shape key and now let's click the plus icon to create a new key and now tab in and we'll just modify this slightly so alt click this loop right here press s and shift z and just scale it up slightly um, be careful here we just snap this on the surface so we don't want to cover this but i think this will be enough so now if you tab out and if you scrub through your key you can see you are able to do this movement with the value of the key and that's something that can be animated too so let's insert the keyframe there just hover over the value press i to insert the keyframe and now as it compresses down on frame 5 we'll just increase the value to 1 and press i again and move to frame 10 where it stretches reduce the keyframe and press i again and you can see we are drawing this curve there and we have the key channel there you can just select it hide the others and press period again to see it 
and now we'll move here when it happens again and just before it touches right there we'll insert one more keyframe there and we can disable the auto keyframe we'll don't need it anymore and let's have it compressed like this to a frame 25 and again we'll insert keyframe increase this to one and press i to insert keyframe and now let's go to frame 4d and let's reduce this to zero press i to insert keyframe there and we can do the same thing as before as we have this bounciness there we can do the same thing here so let's select this frame at the top of the stretch press t and choose bounce so this bottom effect will be bouncing as well and you can see now it kind of stretches to the sides as well using that shape key so let's now select all of our animation and let's play it back i'll press zero to see it from the camera view and let's see how it ends okay i really like this small animation and even though it looks like it's not much you could see how many things you need to tweak to actually get a good feeling from the animation um, good pacing and there is a lot of work to be done here um, as well you can always just go back in and try to play with the timings you know move the keyframes around try to get animation that's more maybe snappy or something so that's all up to you and now if you want to render out the animation um, there are a few recommendations I have we already did render settings before in the previous tutorial so in the render settings you already should see um, your device set to GPU uh, some denoising active and stuff like that but for the animation it's really important to enable motion blur um, there are some settings there but you'll probably get a good result if you just enable motion blur um, you don't need to worry about it right now um, the important thing is that you have it there and you will see all the difference um, when you render out animation with or without the motion blur so that's something i really recommend there and i'll be rendering frames um, on the cycles gpu so that will take a while to render out it might take a while for you too so maybe you would need to switch this to ev if you want if you don't have so much time or you don't have a powerful pc so let's go to the output settings and right here if you want to render animation you will need to change the format of course you can leave it as png and when you select the folder here um it will render out the frames but you need to composite them again later so if you want to render out animation directly you can just choose ffmpeg video and as encoding you can choose mpeg4 container they'll create the mp4 so now just click this folder icon choose your folder and then you can just go to rendering workspace and press ctrl f12 to render animation or go to render and choose render animation and wait for all the frames to finish so that's the phone icon ringing animation for you. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and the previous one. And please let me know in the comments if you like this format where I split tutorial into two parts for modeling and animation. And if you enjoyed this, please leave that like, it will really help me. And again, if you're new to the channel and you like this and you want to see more, please hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.